Okay, hello everybody and welcome to another episode of the CPA Corner. I'm your host, Toxic Storm, and here I'm joined by Calgo or Blizzard. Hey, hey, How hey, how's Blizzard? everyone doing? I'm doing uh, fantastic. Um, up a little bit earlier this morning, so, you know, just gonna uh, start to my day. That's really great to hear. Why don't you introduce yourself to the people who don't really know you that well? The new people sure in CPA. Sure thing. So, um, I'm Calgo, um, or Calgo Cubs 21. Um, I've been in armies for quite a while to some extent. Um, I joined all the way back in 2007, um, when I first encountered, uh, an ACP war in game. I believe it was Romans versus ACP. Um, and I just stumbled upon it in, uh, Dojo. Um, so that was kind of my first introduction to armies. Um, I didn't officially enlist in uh, an army uh, until 2008 when I enlisted with uh, the Nachos. Um, later on, by 2009, I eventually drifted over back over to ACP. Um, got involved with several other armies uh, uh, that I joined up, such as Black Panthers, Roman Fire Warriors. Um, uh, Club Penguin Warriors and a, and a couple others, um, but um, I didn't really do much back in back in OG. I was just a troop. Um, I was like, I think I was like eight, eight to ten years old. Um, so very, I had very broken English back then. Um, it was a, it was an interesting time. And around 2010, I quit armies because obviously I was growing out of it. Um, and I returned Until you back, came back. In, <laughs> I came back in, in, in 2021. Um, kind of just stumbling upon armies on accident. I thought they were completely dead. I was playing Club Penguin Rewritten at the time in 2021. Um, and I happened just to uh, just search up Club Penguin on the uh, Discord like search feature. Uh, and one of the first ones that came up was Army of Club Penguin. And to my surprise, I was like, I thought these guys were dead. I thought all armies were dead. Uh, uh, after 2017 um, and so I joined up and uh, that's kind of how I got my start um, I've the, for the past year I led uh, ACP um, and it's been kind of a wild ride for me because when I started as leader I mean we were um, struggling max wise and like obviously ACP went through a, a really rough patch in 2022 um, but we kind of did it all. We won Legends Cup. Um, we won all of our our wars. So it, it, it's been a, it's been a wild ride. So yeah, that's kind that's of a little weird. bit of an introduction to me. Yeah, that's a great introduction. How about you tell us about uh, the journey of ACP? How did you raise it from the bottom to the top? I mean, it wasn't at the bottom, but it was struggling. You know? Yeah. How did you do all of that? Tell us about I the mean, process. I think the lowest point, I, I don't know what the low, I don't know if it was the lowest recorded max ever, um, but I believe there was a, a max size of four in there uh, right before I, I joined I joined up. Um, I kind of always wanted to get involved in ACP staff and like it's always been a dream of me, of mine to be ACP leader since I was like really young, uh, but I never really went for it. Um, cause the timing just never seemed great for me. Um, and I also wanted to be a, I wanted to build something from the bottom up. Um, and ACP when I joined in 2021 was far from that. Um, obviously you had the mass retirements, um, which kind of led to, um, a downturn, uh, in ACP's performance over time. Um, uh, but I think the lowest po point that I saw was, I think we had a max ACP had the max of four that su summer of 2022. Um, and I think eventually vets were, I mean, I was a vet. I was kind of getting sick of seeing what, what I saw. And I just wanted, I wanted to actually see things change. And I realized the longer I sit on the sidelines, expecting for the army to change and improve, nothing's going to change. Nothing's going to happen. And eventually I realized I got to be the one who t takes action. So I kind of made a vow to myself that if I was going to join the ACP staff, um, I was gonna make it my my sole my sole goal to climb to leader as quickly as possible, um, uh, no matter what 
the cost kind of was. So I kind of gave up that whole summer uh, grinding. Um, Zeus, who was the uh, leader at the time, gave me mod. Um, and I, I, I mean, back then the staff team was very, very small. Um, but I mean, every day I was just like, wake up and, and like, if there was anything to do, I wanted to be the first one to do it and handle it um, and be involved. Cause I mean, you gotta start small from somewhere to build up. Um, and I mean, we worked our, our butts off that summer. I mean, Project uh, Revival was a huge thing. It's, it's one of the big reasons why I got involved in the staff team. Um, basically kind of calling for all of that to kind of come back and let's prop the army up. Let's let's do this right this time and let, let's fix all of uh, the issues um, that have been kind of the army has been suffering from for the past uh, year. Um, so that kind of rallied us all together. We uh, won Beach Bra Brawl 2, which was a huge um, at the time was a huge thing for us because it kind of boosted morale. Um, and kind of paved the way for us to be able to um, make our run to um, regain major status, which I think was the biggest thing for the army. If that hadn't happened, I think ACP would uh, still kind of be demotivated and, and kind of in the gutter. Because like major army status is it's a make or break for armies, I, I, I think, at, at least for ACP. Troops are very prideful. And if you're a troop, you don't want to show up to an army that's maxing two or three or four. And when you see an army low maxing, it becomes a, a spiraling occurrence where the people just don't want to show up as much, um, especially if events aren't interesting. And it becomes this kind of morale um, thing that just it destroys morale. Um, so uh, events have been a big focus. Um, I so within two months of joining, uh, I think it was like less than two months of joining ACP staff, um, I ascended to leader. Um, I think I, 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 and I had zero HCOM experience and leadership experience um, going into leader. It was kind of, it was kind of taken by surprise on everyone when I was named Out leader. Of necessity, basically. Yeah, yeah, and like I was still, um, basically the timeline of events that happened was um, in September. I was own by September. I was only a second ranked mod. Um, above the lowest mod position and it basically went from I got promoted to HCOM and then that same week without any <laughs> HCOM experience I was promoted to commander-in-chief um, so a lot of people were kind of surprised taken aback and like rightfully so you have a guy who has zero experience taking over of course they're gonna be scared um, but like that wouldn't have happened if um, for for several reasons, like if Zeus hadn't backed me as a leader um, and put faith in me. I mean, we spent uh, months just every night in VC talking about plans uh, and him spending just relentless amount of time mentoring me um, and, and kind of just preparing me for the position. Um, and even the advisors, despite their like their skepticisms at first, and rightfully so, they bat they backed me and kind of. It's not easy backing someone that's new and, and lacks experience. And despite that, they still put their faith their faith behind me and, and kind of helped me every step of the way. Um, and I, I, I honestly, for my early days of leadership, things were not easy. I started out with zero HCOM three moderators um very rough time and i think when i was taking over i kind of realized that fact that this is gonna be this is gonna be all on me um at the beginning and like there's gonna be a lot that has to come together for this to work um because we were a major army yeah but i think the week i took over we were on the brink of losing major army status plus we we completely lacked a staff team so it, it, everything had to come together quite quickly. And especially with, um, I think we had our 16 year anniversary the following week after I got um, ino uh, inaugurated. And right after that was Legends Cup. So very quick turnaround time um, to pull everything together. Um, but um, we kind of just started small and we just focused on one thing at a time. Um, 
I think our biggest focus was getting our recruiting um, division off the ground as fast as possible for Legends Cup. Um, and turns out that worked really well. Everything came together um, amazingly. Um, and we got to Legends Cup. We pulled off a, a huge upset against Help Force, um, which was when I first started, I had no clue what I was doing leading. Like I was very, um, I was a very timid leader, um, very nervous. Um, when, when we had like competed in tournament battles, I would just have nervous breakdowns because I, I, <laughs> I lacked experience. And so um, when we beat at Health Force, that was huge. And obviously we didn't, we didn't beat um, Warrior Vikings in the semi-finals of Legends Cup. Um, but you know, it was a huge learning experience for me. Um, and kind of paved the way for um, the rest of my successes. And um, I think for ACP wise, there was a lot of tough moments in my leadership that kind of redefined and kind of set up my path um, towards what I wanted to do. Um, and there were a lot of times I wanted to quit, throw in the towel. Um, I had hit breaking points and um, Despite that, I kind of just got right back up and said, yeah, if I if I give in, if I throw in the towel, I'm just giving in to what everyone else wants. And um, back then it wasn't cool to like be ACP. Um, I mean, I think a lot of people remember it was kind of a common place to kind of trash and make fun of ACP um, in the CPA chats. And whether it was trashing on them for their numbers, trashing on them, um, for just ACP not not being like a, a war hungry army, it, it was a common place, and I wanted to change that. Um, and that was something that was going to have to happen over time, uh, and not instantly. Because um, I mean, you can't do this uh, on, on, on the back of one person. It has to be done on the back of multiple people working together as a team. Um, so build, building up the staff team was a huge huge focus of mine, um, and innovation. I mean. I think a lot of armies don't innovate these days and don't put in uh, the work that's kind of required um, to win. And a lot of armies just sit sit around waiting things for things to happen and, and come to them. Um, I know there's a lot of armies that recruit, but um, I think there's a level of how far we take things. Um, and I kind of just said, I don't want to waste any of my uh, any of my year and kind of just sit around waiting for things to happen being a reactionary leader i want to be the one making the decisions on the fly and kind of dictating what happens um so i kind of set my sights on like if an army is talking shit on me i'm gonna declare war like we're gonna set the tone for everything of what acp is and what we stand for um and over time i'm i think i think that alone drew a lot of people to our cause because a lot of people saw like ACP came from literally <laughs> we came from literally nothing um, from some summer 2022 uh, and and we built it up to an army that was m maxing 61 this year and still holds the highest max of the year so um, it, it's it's been a, it's been a wild ride for us um, and obviously we had a lot of turbulence whether it was um, through our loss in March Madness or World War Nine, which was obviously a very controversial moment. Yeah. How about we talk about you and about your highs and your lows in ACP? You, you said sure. you also mentioned about them. You had a, you've been a part of a lot of controversial, you know, yep. <laughs> a lot. A lot. Hey, there is yeah. one I want to mention. But before we sure, go, go into World it. War Nine and all of that, the one controversial yeah. thing I remember that you had to face you remember when you got banned from the league for having your army do some sus formation on CPAB? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, kind of in a, just kind of going down in the Templars fashion on that. Um, I look back on it, I, I kind of chuckle. Um, but yeah, I can, I can go into that. Um, yeah, basically, but keep it PG, bro. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll keep it PG. Um, I won't go into, into deep detail on, on what exactly happened, but Basically, um, CPA last year held like a mini-esque tournament um, called Monster Mash um, that we competed in. Obviously, um, I was heavy pro for like competing in this. Uh, my HCOM at the time were not 
fun and didn't want to participate because they kind of thought it was a lackluster planned um, tournament. Um, so there was some heavy opposition there, um, but we kind of still pulled things together last minute for that. Uh, we lost the subsequent um, battle itself, which was unfortunate. Um, but then we were the only, I believe we were the only army that competed in like the contest afterwards, which is like kind of like a, uh, it was a murder mystery hunt where you competed challenges in different rooms and had to like hunt down uh, people who were like game masters or whatever to get the pieces. Um, and I think no other army participated or like full army. And I think it was just some other people who were like individuals from other armies competing. Um, so we kind of felt like we, I mean, that should have been something where we did well on. It didn't end up well because one of the rooms we moved to, um, we basically got a prompt of, uh, I believe it was uh, do, do a unique funny formation that makes me laugh um, and oh that prompt God. yeah I'm, I'm not going to say what what my army did um, everybody but, knows already I think so. yeah everyone everyone oh knows um, but basically I didn't I, I want to clarify I didn't like condone or tell them to do what they did it kind of we had everyone in rather than having them in the stage i had everyone gathered up in a vc so people could call out the locations uh, of, of um, the, like the judges quicker so we could like get to the room as fast as possible turned out that was a very poor idea on my part because all it took was one uh, 14 year old troop to scream over the mic everyone do this and everyone did it and oh my uh, god <laughs> Obviously, it, 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 I mean, it didn't really look like what they were saying to do, but, um, and we didn't get penalized for that. It was because, um, I, I believe four, what, what happened is four of our troops got banned from CPAB for like one to two weeks, um, because they were making some, uh, inappropriate comments in game, um, regarding that formation, uh, which is, uh, right. Like uh, back then I was very vocal, um, and kind of angry about what happened um because obviously like i felt i i wanted to stick up for my army and i felt like the punishment was harsh and it was kind of something that was a mob mentality thing uh, but looking back at it like i completely agreed with their degree with their decision to punish us and it was an immature thing thing that happened and, and it was a learning experience you gotta be careful and and look out for possibilities that might happen and risks and obviously we took a huge risk and gamble by having an open vc like that so yeah that's what by happened way, about, so about monster mash did yeah you guys hosted or was it like the league who hosted it i'm not it was about that it was the league that hosted it but like it wasn't like an official tournament um like it wasn't really it was like a th something thrown together it was more a community event than tournament is what i would describe it as because there weren't prediction posts um there wasn't a trophy or anything like that um so like it, it, it wasn't like it was a last minute thrown together thing that was supposed to be a bigger it was supposed to be like um, a giant match between all the armies together in one room but every army kept dropping out to the point where it was just Wire Vikings and SWAT uh, and ACP. So um, and it wasn't. Who was feeding SWAT back then? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. I won. I won the tournament. Okay, it's not a tournament, but I still won it with Cool Guy and the other guys. Yeah. No. But, and uh... yeah. I mean, it was fun, and whatever yeah. happened with ACP was unfortunate. But I mean, some yeah. of us kind kind of laughed how when it started, you know, when we saw it. Yeah, it was so, it was a yeah. learning experience. So um, I I honestly that, chuckle that, on it. It's funny as it's funny as hell looking back. Yeah. So here, I guess it begs the question, or yeah, I guess I'd like to say at this point, if you don't get like the legend position this year. I mean, I think everybody should just try it, maybe, you know, I mean, you deserve it. You're probably the future legend this year, like Calgo, the CPA legend of 2024, 2023, I guess. Yeah, 2023. 
I mean, bro, what do you think? Would you get it this year? I mean, of course you would after everything you did and everything you said, but there are also competition. Uh, you're maybe in a competition with Cool Guy and Austin. I guess it's a, it's a huge competition between you, three of you guys. What do yeah. you think about this? I mean, personally, um, outside of Cool Guy and Austin, I don't think there is anyone else uh, competition-wise that that. And I, I I say that wholeheartedly. Like I genuinely do not think there's anyone else. Uh, maybe EGCP leaders, but like none of them are really outspoken you can say enough Dino, maybe? to stand out. Dino, maybe, but like I I, I I'm I'm a bit divided on on that one in terms of. I mean, he'll be w. nominated. Yeah, he's yeah, I, I think he'll be nominated. I think, and I think, all, I think, I think the winner should all be one of you guys. Will be nominated. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I genuinely think, like, I agree. I think it's, um, it's, it's one of us three. Um, if it does happen, it may not. Ha I, I honestly am under the belief that I think no one might. I believe nobody might get uh, Legend this year, and that's just purely because of how how Legends went last year with all the backlash and. Um, obviously, a lot of people getting inducted. I think Legends will be a lot more um, held to a stricter standard this year. Um, so, and, and we'll see about that. But um, I genuinely, like, I am perfectly fine with not getting Legend. Um, I, I mean, I think our achievements stand on their own. And uh, I think Legend was never really my, my big goal. Um, so I would love to see Cool Guy or Austin get that because... People, and, and this is something super frustrating, um, people attribute a lot of our successes uh, with ACP um, to either me or someone else. And it's like, no one realizes that like, I wouldn't have been successful without Cool Guy and Austin. Like they made our, our, our runs and like our all of our successes possible. Um, Legends Cup, that wouldn't have happened without them too. Like we, I mean, we kind of, uh, when we came out of World War IX, we all were under the same agreement that we were going to give it our all and grind together and not a single one of them slacked. Um, and we all did that as, as, as a one unit together. Um, and, you know, they are some of the hardest working leaders in the community and I wouldn't have promoted them to um, leader if I didn't think so. So, um, yeah, but I, I genuinely think, I genuinely think there's, there, I mean, all the other competition, I just genuinely think achievement-wise and, and in terms of taking stands, and, and, and I think a lot of the leaders right now in this community are reactionary um, to what happens. They don't take action on their own. They just kind of sit on their butts waiting for things to happen. And, you know, that's going to offend some people out there, but hey, man, I mean, it's time for people guess... to wake up and, and, yeah. and, and take action of their own. Or this community is just going to burn out which i don't want army army leaders should be the ones dictating how things go i mean speaking of burning out we could look like like at the small army scene right now yep. i think most of the small armies are kind of dead or not strong enough or yeah. not there isn't enough action what do you think about that scene specifically in the league or in the entire community how, how could we improve it it's interesting. Um, I think it, it's it's a troubling situation because SM is in a weird spot of a lot of the people like SM doesn't have a, most of the SMs don't have a lot of their own troops. For example, a lot of them are shared between armies and stuff. Um, and I just think it's the size of the community. Um, I, I, I am under the belief that we should do do away with major army and SM statuses entirely. Um, I mean, I think a lot of people, some people may disagree, um, but armies are max, like armies are struggling to max in their twenties. Some armies will obviously peak and get up, grow up to thirties, but like, and like sometimes those will see forties, fifties, sixties in tournaments, but like, it's not as big as it used to be. Uh, there's the pool is of, of people the armies are drawing from is a lot smaller than it used to be and it's going to continue to do so so i think genuinely we should do away with those classifications um in terms of sm armies um i'm not like i, I i'm not the best that can speak speak on this because i haven't led an sm army before um 
I'd certainly love one day to lead my my own SM army, but I don't. That's kind of on the horizon. I think I'm I'm done, retired for good. But um, you know, I have immense respect for what they do because it's not easy, um, especially dealing with all the criticisms from armies. Major armies throw a lot of shit their way, um, and it can be sidelined. So um, it, it's not easy staying motivated. I feel like it's hard to stay motivated. Um, and, and kind of find that purpose for keep going for SM. So, um, yeah, but you know, I want to uh, see, I want to see more SM ar armies out there. I think that would be very healthy for the community, um, to have more competition out there. There are a lot of topics we'd like to talk with you about, but oh, yeah, yeah. for the time we have right now, hopefully we could have you in another episode in the future, but for now, I would love this, to. Yeah. Yeah. I think this episode was more ACP centered your yep. life in the CPA community, how it all happened. I mean, you're, you're a great uh, guest here on our Thank you. podcast. Thank you very much for being with us. Now, before we let you leave, I guess, do you have anything you want to say to the community? Anything you want to share? The floor is yours. Yeah, um, I just want to say, um, and I want to kind of look, look at everyone in the community and just say like, look, you guys are the future of the community. Um, there are not that many leaders in this in this community and, and like you have a lot of people who have the position but how many people actually exemplify that and show that um, don't let anyone tell you you can't do what, what you want to do like like if you want your army to do better be the force of change that you want to be take take that kind of charge and and um, and no, like, I think it's it's easy to just get discouraged um, and want to give up. But just know every other successful leader has failed time and time again. And you can rack up as many failures. Uh, and you can rack up a whole list of them. But at the end of the day, those failures make you stronger. Um, and I do not regret a single one of my failures because they made me the person I am today and helped me... Um, win legends cup and, and and get to where i am now so um don't be afraid and, and, and take action i mean the community needs more leaders and i can't say that enough thank you very much cargo for this great podcast for this great thank you. interview you thank you so been much great. toxic and uh Mogi. yeah really thank you everybody you me on yeah that's great to, he to hear thank you everybody for watching hopefully see you guys on the next episode of the cpa corner Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>